Hello everyone, Beastie here and today I am uh, back with another video. This time I'm finally doing Bronze to Grandmaster series, but it will be very very different from what you usually see from other content creators in StarCraft 2. I will not be doing any gameplay uh, video, you know, me starting in Bronze or something like that. Instead, what I'll be doing is I will be making 7 videos, 1 video per league, explaining, for example, if you're in Bronze League that we're covering this video, uh, what you should be focusing on no matter what race you're playing. So for example, I'm going to talk about if you're bronze, you should focus on, you know, very basic things. If you're platinum, let's talk about scouting and so on and so forth. I will explain why those things are important. And basically with this guide, I want to make a very informative kind of video for each league. So if you're platinum, you can check out platinum and be like, okay, this is, these are the things I should be working on. And I'm also going to help you uh, with how to improve those things and how to recognize what you're doing wrong. In this series, we'll be focusing on nine different things. So they are micro macro decision making, game knowledge, builds, hotkeys, scouting, APM, which is, you know, APM is useless if you're just spamming. So it's more like effective AP APM and then also mind games at the end. Of course, like I said, we're not going to be including mind games in bronze video. Uh, in bronze one, we're gonna talk about more basic things, but those nine skills in StarCraft uh, we'll be discussing in depth depending on what league the video is about. So let's just get into it. Bronzies, this video is for you, so let's get started. Uh, like I said, we're gonna be covering, covering very basic things and in one of these videos, if it's you know either for bronze or next ones you might already see some stuff you know about but we're gonna cover everything from bronze to grandmaster so the first thing we're gonna be talking about is in-game settings uh, I think this is something that's very important and this kind of sets you up for your whole Starcraft 2 experience or perhaps even your Starcraft 2 career so this is something that's very important it's very easy you just kind of get through it you save the settings and they're always there so first things first the graphics settings a lot of people ask me what do I use this is what I use when I stream and when I when I play um, I found that these settings for me are personally the best performance wise and also having the nice look You've probably seen a lot of pro players play on really, really bad settings, and a lot of people wonder why is that? You know, the game looks ugly. Don't you want the game to be pretty? Well, when I was a pro player, I don't, I didn't really care how the game looks like. I just wanted my game to run smooth, and I just wanted to see things very, very clearly. So what you will see very often in pro players' uh, monitors when they do play, you will see that everything is on low except texture quality and maybe terrain as well. Uh, the reason why you would put texture quality and terrain on medium is so that you can see uh, Dark Templars a lot easier and also all the explosions, all the lights popping up, the little bugs on the grass map, they are gone. They don't exist. So the game looks very, very simple and a lot of people prefer that because they don't get distracted by those set shiny things. So these are my settings, you can try these, see how they work out for you, and then you can try the kind of the quote unquote worst settings, but if you're having perhaps a weaker computer, uh, more FPS is obviously going to be better for you. Uh, sound settings, um, this is kind of you know subjective, whatever you prefer. Uh, one thing I would definitely suggest uh, as far as this goes is to have headphone mode on. I know this is something that for FPS is very important. First person shooters, so you can kind of figure out where your opponent is shooting from. But I found this extremely useful in StarCraft 2. So for example, if your screen is, if you're, if you're looking at your screen and then you, can, you have headset, if you hear a sound in the bottom left, then you know that something is being at attacked in the bottom left side. Um, which helped me quite a bit in my StarCraft 2 games. Sometimes there's a lot of things going on at the same time, alerts, and then if you just hear a sound on your um, like left side of your headset, you can know that you know a Zergling is attacking or Oracle is killing something, so you kind of instantly know to look over there. Voice chat is not important. Mouse and keyboard. Uh, so again, mouse sensitivity uh, is very, very subjective. See what works out for you. I definitely suggest disabling Windows key 
so you don't accidentally click it. And also, if you somehow misclick Alt-Tab, disable that as well, because the last thing you want to do is, you know, play a StarCraft 2 game and then accidentally Alt-Tab in the middle of the fight and lose the game. I definitely suggest turning on uh, reduce um, mouse lag, turn it on. Uh, it will make, like it says, it will make your mouse more responsive, but may drastically reduce frame rate. Not really, but you know. Um, again, the mouse scroll speed, scroll speed and drag scroll speed, I keep it pretty much on the same level and uh, very close to my actual sensitivity. Again, this is something you should test for yourself and uh, just see what works out for you. Gameplay. Now, this is very important. Um, these settings are something that I've coached platinum players, even diamond players, that they're like, how do I see this or that? I've seen it on streams, but I don't know. I don't know how they have it on. So I'm going to talk about these and what they all mean. So first things first is show alerts. A lot of people that I know actually disable these, but I've gotten used to these and they help me quite a lot. So show alerts, like it says, when enabled, in-game alerts will be displayed on the left side of the screen. So basically a text comes up, uh, upgrade completed or whatever else. And over time that kind of, I got used to it. Whenever something pops on the left side, I'm like, okay, upgrade is completed. Or if I'm getting attacked, it's just kind of like an extra little alert showing you that there's something going on. Um, I definitely suggest turning this on. It has helped me quite a bit. Try it out. Um, so display build grid, this is something that uh, I turn on basically like it says use this to see how much space lies between buildings so you can kind of position your buildings a lot easier especially if you're Protoss or Terran. I have that on. Always show worker status is very very important because uh, you don't need to like select uh, the SCVs or your workers to see how many workers you have on that specific base. There will be a number above your command center clearly showing how many uh, workers are mining. So that kind of just makes your uh, job a lot easier. Simple command grid. Um, I use the simple one. It doesn't really matter as long as you're using uh, hotkeys. Doesn't really matter. Uh, but you can, you can disable or enable this. Yeah. Uh, show build order indicator. Uh, current order indicator, sorry. Uh, so basically, this is something you want to have on. So whenever you issue a command, there will be like a little pointer on the ground, basically showing where the units are going. Turn it on. It, it's just it's just helping you. Uh, and this works for every order in the game. Select all larva. This is only for the Zerg players. And what this basically means is if you click on larva, uh, with your left click, it will select all larvae on that hatchery. Uh, I personally have it disabled because I don't really see why you would ever have this on. Because you usually have your hatcheries key bound in one hotkey anyway, so don't really know um, why this would be good or important. I don't know why this is in game. Now this one. Trust me when I say this, I am not over exaggerating. I've had people that were platinum that asked me, how do you select enemy units? And I was like, you just click left button? And they're like, no, it doesn't work. And then I realized that some people are playing StarCraft without having this enabled. This is extremely, extremely important. It allows you to click on the enemy units, uh, check their upgrades, check their health, check their um, energy, it, you know, if. If it's a high Templar with around 70 energy, but you're not sure if it has storm or not, it costs 75, you can click on it and see when the storm is ready. This is extremely important. This is not an option. Definitely have this on. Uh, display experience points. Now, this is something that back when I was a pro player, a lot of people asked me, why do you have that on? It's, it's a, like, why do you care about experience gain? Now, there's a little trick with this that uh, not many people are aware of. So every time you kill a unit, when you have this on, a little experience will pop up. And that experience is used for your uh, war chests and leveling your race out. Like, I, I don't know what it's It's like for portraits. I don't know what it's for. Anyway, it's for portraits, like leveling your account, whatever. It doesn't matter. So every time when you kill a unit, when you kill a building, you get little experience, like plus 50 experience pop pops up uh, above the said unit. So you might be wondering, isn't this just gonna like clutter the screen and stuff? 
it will on the beginning until you get used to it. But the reason why I use this is sometimes, for example, your Banshee, let's say if you're Terran, will shoot a missile and the enemy unit will either move out of the your vision range into fog of war or your Banshee will die so you, you will lose vision. If you have this enabled, you will actually see whether the unit the enemy unit died or not because the experience points will show even if you have no vision on that part of the map. This is why I use it. I think it's incredibly, uh, incredibly good, incredibly important. Definitely give it a go and it will help your uh, overall gameplay for sure because um, it will just have situations when you're playing, you're like, ah, did I kill that? Did it die? And then if it's an important unit like Colossus, and your Vikings just shot uh, a bunch of missiles, you won't really know if it's dead if uh, the unit went into the fog of war. Enable it. Now, allow Windows rest uh, window restore. Um, I actually don't really know what this is on, but turn it on. Uh, next thing, these are also very, very important. Uh, this is something that's, uh, you know, depends from person to person. So this is show unit life bars. So, like it says, normal is showing uh, health bars above units only when you're selecting the units. Targeting shows friendly uh, units when targeting a beneficial ability and enemy units when targeting a harmful ability. So it's kind of like very, very specific. Uh, selected um, is selected units only. Not sure when, oh, when hold, normal is when holding a button. Okay, my bad. Damaged uh, only shows units that are that have their health damaged in, in some way. So for example, if you have 20 Marines, 10 of them are damaged, only those 10 will be shown HP and the other 10 are full HP, so they will not have anything above their head. Or always, which is show all unit life bars. Uh, if you're new to StarCraft and you want to improve and you want to learn the game, I think having this on always is very, very useful and very, very important. Um, the reason for that is, um, you know, you don't, you don't want to always select units to see their health and sometimes you're not sure how much your unit has health and if you have kind of like a damaged unit life bars on, I think it, it becomes a little confusing and this is something that I found to be very useful and I would definitely suggest you have it on always on. Control groups. Um, these are basically the control, the hotkey control groups that you have uh, on the bottom side of your screen. So you can put them on normal, hidden, unclickable, and unassignable. Um, I put these on unclickable. Uh, what that means is once I create the hotkey group, I can't accidentally mouse click them, but they're still showing and I can see which hotkey group is doing what. So for example, if I put my Nexus on four, it will, you know, have a little Nexus picture on number four, but if I try to click it, uh, you can't click it, but you can still change the groups and change the, the you know, the hotkey groups and, you know, swap them around or whatever. It's just to stop accidentally misclicking on those. Show flyer help. Now, this is the thing that I was talking about. Um, a lot of people have no idea what this is and they didn't know how to turn this on. So what is show flyer help? So you guys have might, have might have noticed when someone streams and there's like an overlord from above, you don't really know if you want to cast, for example, Ravager Biles, you don't really know when, where to cast the Biles, where is the bottom of the overlord. So if you have this always on, you will see a small indicator on the bottom where it shows the center of the, where the center of the overlord is. So this is for air units showing their center on the ground. So if you're using any kind of abilities, whether it's Storm or uh, Ravager Bile, which is the most common thing for this, uh, you will see where the bottom of the unit is, where the center of the flying unit is, and it just makes it so that you can target that unit with your spells a lot easier. Colors, you know, this is choose whatever colors you want. This is something a lot of people actually ask me, like how do you change your colors? Go in options, go in colors. You can choose your minimap color right here. You can put whatever you want. This is the color that you are playing with in the game. This is your allies color, enemies color, and then neutral color like random creeps, monsters on, on the map. And then you have the colorblind options as well. Social, 
Um, I would suggest putting show timestamps. This is outside of the game settings and uh, you can enable the uh, mature language filter. And also if you are getting spammed by invites or annoying people, you can put only allow friends to send me invites, send me messages and set busy when playing a game. So basically if you're outside of the game, uh, you will be, you know, green, everything will be normal. But when you're in the game, it will automatically turn to busy and then you get out of the game and you're turning to green, AKA, you know, people are able to message you language and region uh, if you're playing uh, so EU server only has one one server one region which is the EU so you can't really change it on EU but if you're from NA or um, on if you're playing on NA server for example uh, you can choose whatever your closest server is or you can just pick best match and allow Blizzard to kind of choose servers for you and this is very very important um, for example if you are living in I don't know California and if you put your preferred server to be Australia, you're gonna have a lot of lag. So make sure to see what you have there. And then observer and replay. Uh, this is for the replay interface. You can use the WCS one. I use default one. Uh, WCS one is what you see on pro tournaments and streams. And um, same with the observer interface. I like to use default, makes it easy. Um, has all the info I need and that is pretty much it okay so now let's get into the actual gameplay let's talk about uh, how many workers does it take to fully saturate a base let's talk about building positioning and walling off we're gonna be uh, talking about Protoss first and then Terran and then the Zerg at the end so first things first is if you're a Protoss player uh, you need three probes on the gas this is the same for every single race you only need three workers on gas in order to mine it the most efficiently. Having more will not actually increase any mining whatsoever. The second thing I wanted to mention is if you have these settings enabled, like I was mentioning earlier, you will see how many workers you have right here. So you need 16 workers to mine efficiently and actually having more workers than that, you will mine a little bit extra, but it just won't be worth it it's better to just expand and then have work 16 workers on your second base 16 workers on your third base and so on and so forth now one thing that i wanted to mention is uh, sometimes w if your other two races you might have more workers than 16 but as a protoss you want to have uh, basically two workers per mineral patch at all times which every base has eight mineral patches which is 16 workers uh, the reason for this is when you use your workers as a Protoss, you do not uh, waste any time with the probes. You just set your buildings, they're being built, and that's it. Uh, one thing that I can suggest to you guys when you're playing Protoss and you want to cr make uh, new buildings, don't pull away workers from the mineral line because what will happen is if you pull this worker, uh, build something, and then put it back, you might mess up the mineral mining and your probes might... You start derping around and that way you lose your mining time so what you will see a lot from pro players is whenever they want to build something they take the probe of the gas they build for example two gateways and then just put the probe back on the gas and by doing that you don't disrupt the gas mining and you don't disrupt the mineral mining as well um, when do you start making when you start making the second base another thing i wanted to mention is the moment you place it you will see a lot of players also place a pylon right next to you uh, the reason for that is when you have your warp gate researched completely you can turn your gateways into warp gates which allows you to instead of slowly make your units you can warp them in if you have a pylon that's right here for example and you start warping in units here it will take much much longer to warp in a unit but if you have a nexus started even though it's not finished and you start warping in unit here your unit warp in will be much 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 faster and it will be a lot easier for you to defend your bases and reinforce as well now once your gateway is turned into a warp gate the same rule will apply so this pylon because it's powering the gateway once it turns into warp gate your warp pins in this pylon area will be faster 
than if you had this random pylon over here, which would cause the units to warp in much, much slower. So that's one thing one to consider. Is under enemy fire. Okay, I'm getting attacked by the AI. So next thing I wanted to talk about is uh, walling off as a Protoss in all three matchups. As you know, while you're bronze, this is how you should be walling off. Uh, to make sure that you don't die to random units and random uh, run buys. So you can see I have a pylon here, gateway, and then a cyber core. This leaves only one space for the unit here, and then you can place your zealot or your stalker. So if the zerg is rushing zerglings, you have your unit in the wall off, and then the enemy is not able to go into your main base. Never do a full wall off as a protoss because then you will have very hard time expanding later on and uh, actually moving your army out on the map. Another thing I wanted to mention is building positioning. Um, and this is something that you've probably seen on uh, in the StarCraft community. This is something that's widely known as the Artosis Pylon. So if you have a bunch of buildings that are being warped, uh, that are being powered by only one pylon, that is a no-no. Uh, the reason why that's really, really bad is if this pylon dies, all these gateways become unpowered, and then, well, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. So when you have, whenever you have multiple buildings, make sure you have at least a couple of pylons powering them up so that the enemy cannot just snipe one building and unpower your whole base rather than, um, you know, just straight up losing the game because of that. Now, another thing I wanted to mention, it's also very important for Protoss, if you're going for any kind of tech, whether it's Dark Templars or Stargate, never try to make your pylon in tech like right here. Uh, try to hide your tech as much as possible, so if the opponent tries to scout, they need to go deep into your main base to see what your actual tech is, because tech buildings are super, super important for Protoss, and the last thing you want to do is kind of let your opponent know how many uh, or how many gateways and what tech you have. Um, and that's pretty much it. This is very, very basic kind of like, you know, talking about Protoss uh, building placement and mineral mining as well. Once your main base is fully saturated, I mean, this space is getting mined out, but let's say there's 16 out of 16 here. What you want to do is once your main base is fully saturated, only then you want to rally both your nexus on the natural and start saturating that base as well. Uh, once your natural is fully saturated, then you want to saturate your third base and so on. Um, now let's move into the Terran and then we're gonna discuss the Zerg as well. We're back with Terran. Let's talk about walling off with Terran. So the first supply depot that you want to be making Great as a Terran player is uh, this one right here. And after that, you want to follow it up with barracks right here. And then later on, whenever you need the second supply depot, you will make it right here, making a full wall off. So unlike Protoss, you can fully wall off with Terran because you can always lower your supply depots, which allows your units to get out of your base. Now, let's talk about saturation. So like I said, Pro Terran, just like Protoss, just like Zerg, you require only three workers on the gas. Uh, if you have more on the gas, it will not help you whatsoever. But there is a difference as far as mineral mining goes. So I just talked about Protoss needing only 16 workers, uh, and that's pretty much it. But as a Terran player, I would actually suggest having about 18 workers per base. Now you might wonder why you know 16 is the optimal mining that i need that's how i mine efficiently so why would i need more well the reason for that is unlike protoss they can just place their buildings as a terran player you need your worker to be there and constantly uh you know build that building so for example if you have let's say 16 right now and i want to build another barracks well suddenly i'm 15 out of 16 and i will be not mining as much but by having more workers like this, if you want to place down two extra barracks, well, suddenly you will still be mining at 16 and everything will be all right. I don't suggest going above 18. I think 17, 18 is the perfect number. And just make sure to send these workers back to mining. Uh, the moment you start the building, you can just 
right click on the minerals and then when they're done they will go back to Command mining has been now let's start on expand over yeah. here and let's discuss add-ons so this is something that is very very specific to Terran you have add-ons so you need to be very very careful where you position your units so the starting barracks should always go like this and then whenever you need to build an add-on later on you just lift your barracks like this and make the add-on try not to position your buildings like this next to the command center because when the time comes and you want to build an add-on you won't be able to so then you need to move and you know this barracks should always go on the wall uh, just to make sure you don't die to anything early on but this one will be too close and you won't be able to place your add-on and then you need to lift and it just you know problems all around so whenever you're building buildings with Terran make sure to pull the you know one or two however many SCVs from the mineral um, patch and not the gas because if you pull this SCV from the gas and you start building something you will lose gas mining quite a bit because well the SCV will be gone for a while um, just like with Protoss once you have both gases in the main and once you're um, you know mineral line is fully Man saturated what gear. you want to be doing is rally the SCVs to the natural to make sure you SCV get the full ready. saturation there as well try to avoid placing uh, buildings in on? your mineral line or between your gases um, and your command center and this goes for all three races uh, because if you do this you will only mess up your mining or mining minerals or mining gas the only time where you want to have building right here is if you're placing a missile turret spine crawler spore crawler shield battery or a cannon so all the defensive buildings another thing that I can discuss and mention with Terran uh, as far as building placements go you can swap your add-ons so let's say this barracks is a factory this barracks is a barracks you can swap this one and put your factory onto it, allowing it to use that add-on, whether it's reactor or tech lab. Um, once you get your second base started, uh, you want to also wall that one off to make sure that, well, your bases are safe. And like I said, it is fine to fully wall off your natural like this as well later on. Not instantly, but as you're needing more and more supply depots because unlike Protoss and Zerg, you can just lower your supply depots that allows your army to move out. Now, let's move into the Zerg uh, building placement right now. Okay, now let's talk about Zerg. So Zerg is quite a bit different from Protoss and Terran. Obviously, you can't just place your buildings wherever you want. You need to put them on creep. So just like Protoss and Terran, you only need three workers on gas. Having more will not help you in any way. And just like Terran, I would recommend having uh, more than 16 workers, so about 18 uh, as well. And the reason for that is, uh, just like with Terran, whenever you make a building, that worker is not mining there. So if I pull two drones to make something, uh, you're still on 16 workers. Except, unlike Terran, where they will go back to mining, the your drones will be consumed every time you make a building. So, you know, if you make four buildings, let's say, and your saturation is 14 out of 16, just, something to chew on. Okay. just add two more drones to that base to have a total of 16 or even 18 once again. Now, one advice I can give you in a ZVZ, try to make your spawning pool like this. Uh, the reason for that is if you're playing a ZVZ and links come in, if you position your queen right here, the Zerg player with his Zerglings will have a very hard time killing and surrounding your queen. So that's something you can do. Every ZVZ it doesn't really cost you anything. It's just about where you place your spawning pool. So like I said, just like with Terran, avoid placing buildings you know, where it will interrupt your mining. If you have to make a spore crawler against enemy flying units, make it about here, uh, right here because it will pretty much cover your whole mineral line. And also try not to block the back of your base too much. On some of the maps, you can kind of almost fully wall off your backside with your buildings. And then if a drop comes in or any flying unit, your units won't be able to move as efficiently. So usually Zerg players in the pro play like to keep this area open and build their tech buildings 
kind of like in between bases. So if they had their natural base, they would put a building like here or here or here so that this side is completely open and not vulnerable to drops or enemy uh, sniping your tech. Uh, Zerg is pretty short. That, that's pretty much it. Um, once you play uh, later on, we're going to be talking about ZVZ walling off on the natural. But for right now, that is about it. Let's move on to the next thing. All right, let's discuss a little bit more about the actual StarCraft 2 units, how they work, the basics, and what are tier two, tier 1, tier 2, and tier 3 units, which is something that a lot of people are still confused about. What's their, you know, how do you know what's a tier 1 unit, what's a tier 2 unit, and so on. Uh, I'm not sure that there's a, like a clear-cut explanation anywhere, but this is the general consensus amongst the pro players, amongst the top players, which units are tier 1, tier 2, and tier 3, and I'm going to quickly go through them. So, for example, tier 1 units are pretty much this top side right here. So, Marines, Marauders, and Reapers are tearing. Um, the Gateway units, tier 1 units are Zealots, Sentries, Stalkers, Adepts. Tier 1 units are usually units that you can build off of your very, very basic tech that doesn't require any extra tech whatsoever. And then you have the Zerg tech. So the Zerg tier 1 tech would be Queens, Zerglings, and Roaches, for example, because those are the units you can build out of your hatchery. So what are tier 2 units then? So you can see Ghost right here is in barracks, but it is not a tier 1 unit. Why? Because you don't have access to the Ghosts the moment you build a barracks. You actually need to make a Ghost Academy, which is a tier 2 building. Tier 2 units are also all the units in the factory, except the Thor. So Hellions, Woodamines, Tanks, Cyclones, and Hellbats are tier 2 units. Tier 2 units are usually units that require gas, require a little bit more tech, maybe require a building in order for a tier 2 unit to be made, like a Ghost. Uh, so if you look at a Protoss tech, uh, tier 2 units are Stargate units like Phoenix, Oracles, Void Rays. Uh, stuff like Immortal, War Prism Observers, but not stuff like Colossus. And, uh, and the reason for that is, for Colossus, not only you need a robotics uh, facility, but you also need a Robo Bay, so like an extra tech unit. For the Zerg players, that would be a tier 2 units, would be Hydralisks, they would be uh, Vipers, and they would be Corruptors, Swarm Hosts, Infestors, and so on. Now, let's talk about Tier 3. Tier 3 in StarCraft are the most expensive units that require the most gas usually. They're very gas intensive. High-tech units that also require a special buildings most of the time to produce them. So, for example, Thors are Tier 3. They're very expensive. They require an armory and a tech lab on the factory to be made. Battle cruisers are Tier 3 unit because they require fusion core. And again, they take very long to build. They're super expensive. And then you have the Ravens, even though you don't need any special buildings for them, except starports and attack lab, they're super, super expensive and they're extremely um, cast, like, like ability oriented ability, uh, units, sorry. So uh, they're not something that you're going to be making in the, you know, tier one. They're not something you're going to be making with uh, Hellions super early on. They're a very late game kind of focused unit. So for Protoss, Tier 3 units would be Mothership, because Mothership is extremely expensive. Tier 3 units would be Tempest, Carriers, uh, Colossus, like I mentioned earlier. I'm not sure about Disruptors. Uh, I think they're kind of Tier 2 units just because of their cost, even though they require uh, Robotics Bay in order to be made. I think High Templars are Tier 3 units because they're very expensive and very, very powerful as well. For Zergs, you have units um, like... For example, uh, Broodlords that require Greater Spire to be built. So not only you need Hive, but you also need Upgraded Spire into Greater Spire to be able to produce them. And units like Ultralisks and Viper are also Tier 3 unit that you will not be making in the early game. They are units that you're going to be making in the very, very much late game. So, now... Since this is a bronze video and you're either very new to the game or maybe just not as experienced, my advice for you is if you are learning to play StarCraft and you want to improve to get to the next level, uh, do not 
bother with build orders. This is a very, very common mistake that I see uh, among so many players where, you know, they're trying to copy a pro player and they're in Bronze League or Silver League and they're wondering why it's not working. You're trying to skip too many steps. If you're a Bronze player, you need to learn the basics of the game. Uh, don't bother with Tier 2 units at all. This is me just wanting to explain the difference between Tier 1, 2, and 3 units. Do not try to make some fancy unit compositions with battle cruisers, ravens, with ultralisks, whatever. If you're a bronze player, I want you to focus on the very, very basic units. So, for example, if you're a Terran player, I want you to focus on Marine Marauder. That is your that that's your that's your limit. Just make Marine Marauders. Trust me, you can win games just with those units. By adding more units, you're making it a lot complicated, a lot more complicated for yourself. And instead of learning the very basics of the game, you're trying to kind of skip steps into things that you don't really understand at this point or know much about. And I know that might sound mean, but this is my uh, honest opinion. Stick to very, very tier one basic units. And your main goal is if you're a bronze player, to try to understand as much as you can about the game, understand the basics, uh, like the you know workers, like how to position your buildings, what units do what, what buildings do I need for which unit, and so on and so forth. So by making just tier one unit, basic units will allow your brain to just learn about the other more basic things than the unit compositions. Obviously you can make some Reapers as well, but honestly, just stick to those until you advance into the next league. Uh, if you're a Protoss player, again, don't try to go for High Templars, Feedback, Spellcasters, Mothership, and so on and so forth. Try to stick by, you know, making your your army by researching Warp Gate, getting a lot of Zealots, getting a lot of Stalkers, Adept, Sentries. Even though Sentries are a little bit more complicated, there still are a Tier 1 unit. And just trying to kill your opponent with that if you're a zerg player try to stick with learning a little bit what queens are what queens do they have an inject they have creep spread and also your main unit comp should be zerglings and roaches don't bother going into ravagers trying to learn how to use ravager biles or going into infestors that is far far off and please focus on the basics um so no matter what matchup you're playing, try to use your units and try to win the game. So what else did I want to talk about in the Bronze 2 Grandmaster Guide? This is another common mistake I see very, very often where I coach a Bronze player and he's like, ah, oh, you know, I've been trying this triple command center build. I'm like, whoa, 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 you, whoa, whoa. what do you say? He's like, oh, no, I'm just, you know, trying this triple command center. I'm like, okay, listen up. I'm trying to help you, okay? If you're a bronze player, you the only thing you know about Triple Command Center is its name. You're not at that level yet to understand Triple Command Center builds, sharp timings, you know, heavy tech builds and stuff like that. Uh, so every time when, when I coach someone or someone asks me for advice, what build should I be doing in bronze or silver? The answer is, that doesn't matter. The build doesn't matter. You need to work on your basics. You need to work on just understanding the very simple part of StarCraft. And when you overcome that, and when you know and feel like you over, overcame that, you will advance in the higher league, and that's when you should start working on other things that I'll be talking in my silver uh, uh, video, silver guide in this Bronze to Grandmaster series. So, my suggestion to you is don't try to expand at all. I know that everyone will tell you that you should fast expand and do this and do that and you should proxy and you should rush DTs if you're a lower league. That's all crap. Do not do that. If you're a bronze player, an actual bronze player, I want you to stay on one base. Even if you're a zerg player, even if you're Terran, even if you're Protoss, stay on one base. Do not go second base because going second base makes the game more complicated and we're trying to work on more basic things like I've been talking about in this video, like game settings, walling off, um, building placement, mineral uh, mining, and so on and so forth. And once you feel very comfortable with all those things, then 
implement that into your games you will advance the league eventually if you did everything correctly and then we can work on more uh, and more complicated things so what I want you to do is if you're a Terran player here's a very simple build order for you if you're a Terran player uh, your basic build should be get three barracks make some marines make some marauders maybe get a stim maybe get a shield upgrade push across the map stim and try to kill your opponent if you're a protoss player uh, make four gateways on one base with your cyber core so it would be gateway cyber core research the warp gate just make as many units and go across the map and try to kill your opponent again you're practicing the basics this is not something that you're going to be using in platinum but this is something that will help you kind of overcome the the way that StarCraft 2 works and you will learn more about the units and interaction with the units that you're making and how to use those units as well. And last thing is if you're a Zerg player, this is very weird for the Zerg players to be in one base. Uh, what I want you to do is, I forgot to mention Banelings are tier 1 unit as well. What I want you to do is once you're fully saturated and this goes for all three races once you're fully saturated in one base start making a lot of units uh, and just try to kill your opponent with the units that you'll be making make a timer for you let's say six minutes you're gonna go across the map and attack your opponent uh, the point of this is to learn how to macro learn how to micro a little bit and once that kind of line is 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 crossed then you will advance the league you've probably heard this advice many times which is uh, when someone says how do I get out of bronze league and the most common answer starcraft 2 is just build whatever and I know that's a very simple answer but it is true don't try to do build orders build the tier 1 units go across the map and kill your opponent so if you like I said if you're Zerg player uh, you're gonna get a spawning pool while building up your drone count on one base then you can add a roach warren get zergling speed upgrade and maybe go for a zergling roach kind of uh, push or you can get a bailing nest instead of roach warren and then do a zergling and bailing uh, attack and try to kill your opponent this is my honest advice and this is how I coach everyone and everyone I coach advances their leagues extremely extremely quickly because instead of focusing on everything we try to focus on very specific things depending on what league you are that can help you improve your game as fast as possible so not only you should be learning about your race when you attack your opponent if they're a different race try to understand what their units are doing uh, the units that you have you know if you for example have I don't know zealots against marines kind of learn how that interaction works uh, how range units work against melee units and so on and so forth so like I said focus on really simple unit compositions and just practice just practice player games and that is it Whew. I think this will be it for this episode for the first episode of bronze to grandmaster this is the bronze video like i said a very very simple video talking about very basic things in starcraft 2 please let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed the video and if you have any suggestions that i should have had maybe added in this specific one what would you like to see in the silver gold platinum and so on videos um, i'm very very excited to make them this is something i wanted to do for a while and uh yeah that's pretty much it if you like the video make sure to like it give it a little thumbs up share the video with your friends if you have friends playing starcraft 2 and that will be it from me today let me know if you like this kind of format of the video and of course once we go into the silver uh the things will kind of pick up so the things that we're going to be talking about in silver video we're going to be discussing uh, macro mechanics. We're going to be discussing rally points for each race, discussing APM, um, how it helps APM in your games, how to improve your APM. We're going to be talking about key binds, and we're going to be talking about basic upgrades in StarCraft 2, no matter what race you are. So like I said, we're going to be expanding that knowledge more and more uh, instead of just throwing everything at you at one time. Uh, kind of big pile of information so once again i want to thank you guys so much for watching hope you enjoyed the video i hope you learned something new today and i will see you next time 
If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe and make sure to check out one of my previous videos. As always, I want to thank you guys for watching, have a very nice day, and I'll see you guys next time.